AMD has had kind of a tough couple of years trying to catch up to NVIDIA's relentless pace of new software and product releases, but now they might be starting their comeback. They recently created the Radeon Technologies Group as a separate division from the rest of the company in order to focus more heavily on improving their graphics offerings. And the first fruit of that new initiative is here in the form of Radeon Settings Crimson Edition, a replacement for the Catalyst Control Center driver software that has been used by AMD customers for 13 years. So is it a step in the right direction or is AMD still playing ketchup? Because ketchup is red, which roll the intro. All right, so Catalyst Control Center has been updated many times during its life, but Radeon Settings is a complete overhaul of the software. So the Crimson Edition is what the current release is called, and AMD has said that they'll name subsequent iterations of the Radeon Settings after different shades of red. I guess they're taking a page out of the lipstick industry's book. The driver software attempts to not only make adjusting your graphics and monitor setup much easier, it also claims to have a number of new features that will actually improve performance as well. That second one will vary though from system to system, and we'll look at that later. But for the most part, the usability has definitely improved. So let's pop into the user interface here. When you open Radeon Settings, which launches pretty quickly actually, you're greeted by a very modern looking design. It's a lot cleaner with the main sections grouped into tabs at the top with extra preferences, notifications, and driver updates down on the bottom. In the gaming tab, you'll find various profiles for your installed games, which let you tweak specific graphic settings for each game. And there's also a global settings profile, which sets certain settings as the default for all games, unless you create specific profiles. Overdrive returns from Catalyst with a refined interface that makes it really easy to adjust the overclocking profile for each game. There's no voltage control, but this should still be really useful if you want to squeeze a little bit more juice in a given game to hit your target frame rate, while in other games you don't care as much because they're just not that demanding. Just don't get any of that juice in your system, because juice is liquid. That's bad, sort of unless it's in a water cooling tube anyway. The video tab simply has a number of color presets which you can apply for various use cases like cinema and sports, but you can also make your own, of course. The display tab shows an extremely dumbed down menu for display settings with simple toggles for a virtual super resolution which renders a higher resolution image then your display can display and then downscales it, and GPU scaling, which helps with older games and programs that use aspect ratios like, you know, five by four, what the heck is that? Um, where's all the other display settings though, like custom resolution and whatnot? You actually have to click additional settings on the top right, which brings up a window that pretty much looks like the old Catalyst Control Center again. They almost made it all fit into their nice flat app type design, but not quite. At least the additional settings panel has some pretty robust options for customizing your display setup, though, if you're more of a power user. Finally, speaking of power users, the Infinity tab has some pretty user-friendly setup options with advanced options also available, and the System tab has information about your hardware setup and software version. Overall, interface itself, we're giving it a thumbs up for vast improvement over AMD's previous offerings for driver software, and the individual game profiles for graphics settings and overclocking are nice to still have. I mean, we've already kind of had that except for the overclocking thing, unless you used a third-party tool. Let's talk about some of the other features, though, that AMD has included with this update. You might have noticed in the graphics settings panel that AMD has included frame rate target control, which, what? I thought higher frame rates were always better, Linus. Why would you want to cap them? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One is to save some power. Like if you've got a 60 hertz monitor and you just want to, I don't know, maybe say, for example, save some power, you don't have to use all of the horses that your GPU has. So you can just kind of go, okay, uh, boom, I'm setting my target to 60 because I don't want to deal with V-Sync. And then I can reduce my power use and heat and noise and all that good stuff. So you can set any number from 30 to 200. Nice wide range there. Other features included are a shader cache, which promises faster loading time and reduced stutter when you're moving from like you know, map area to map area by storing frequently used shaders in VRAM, as well as improved frame pacing, which will help titles running on DirectX 9, 10, and 11, and flip queue optimization, which will reduce mouse and keyboard latency during demanding in-game scenarios. All right, 
So that's all great to hear, but how does this latest driver actually improve performance? Should I even download this nonsense? Well, across the board, we're actually seeing modest performance improvements with Fallout 4 and Star Wars Battlefront seeing the biggest jumps, which makes sense because they were just released. Uh, most other games are seeing little to no change in performance, which is more or less to be expected, and hopefully we'll see more games in the future, particularly as AMD has now pledged to release six Wickle driver updates per year, which is less than they used to do, which was 12, but better than they've been doing lately, as they've got about six months without a, without a major drive, driver update in the recent past. So there you have it. AMD's new Radeon settings software. Are they playing catch up? Are they taking a step ahead? What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are. And as always, you can check out more videos from the NCIX team here, and you can check us out on social right about over there. See you on the flip side, Crimson side. Crimson Tide. Apparently that's a thing. I don't know. Crimson Tide? Isn't it like a movie? Like a... See, that doesn't sound dirty to you, right? What? Oh.